they had the two teeth directly over the freaking thing. Huh. Yeah, they, they were all out of whack. Okay, so these clutches, we have two pressure plates here. There's levers. This lever squeezes these two together. We're not connected to squeeze it up yet. These are shaft mounted clutches. Some people call them shaft mounted over centered clutches. It's not what would traditionally be called an over center, but it's close enough. It sort of acts like one. The over center difference is a matter of when you engage it, you get to a certain point and when it's fully engaged, the action is over center so it holds itself in. This one actually, the little bells that push on these levers, um, at the top, they're straight. Mm. So if it was actually an over center, it would be rounded back or tapered slightly here to first go in and then in. The, but since it hits a straight portion, goes in, it doesn't want to fall out anyway. So it's close to an over center. The more common, what they'll have is they'll have a bearing with a set of arms and it will cam actually with two arms that will cam over center to a stop point and that will be where it engages. And this would be disengaged. Okay. That would be between these and another bearing. You'll see that very often in bell housings, SAE, Twin Disc, Rockford, Rockwell. Um, I don't remember who made both of, most of these years ago. I was trying to look up some information on them again because it's been a good 20 years since I fussed with one. Um, when I fussed with them the most was about 40 years ago, um, 38, 38 years ago. That was. Uh, 84. Anyway, so I don't really remember exactly, but they're interesting. I didn't see anything on uh, internet about them. Um, these discs come out separate. So this disc has got, this clutch disc has got friction on both materials, both sides. When this squeezes together, it applies. This spider out here is what carries the power to, in this case, to this gear. Mm. The other case to that gear. Um, and then there's one of them on the far end when we get to it that also has a brake drum on it at the same time. But we have to make room for the, the little clutch actuating arm. So that's where the disc comes in together. And then the outer ring is actually able to turn. Oops. <clears throat> There we go, okay, there. Let's just do this one piece at a time then. Let's get this one on there. Okay, now that's to where it's at the springs. And then this one, which I think we need to go back and have Austin, he didn't want to mess with it, but I think we need to take this apart and wire wheel the thread so it's easier to move. Mm. And what you do when you're putting this on is you push this on with these slots over the arms, because there's space there. And yeah. then when this arm gets in there, then you rotate this. You rotate it so that it's on the solid part for these arms to push against. Okay. Then you put lock pins in here. There's an upper sheet metal piece that holds the lock pins in. But for adjustment, then this threads onto this one with, um, a little pull-out pin and that's the part you normally see is this little pull-out pin and that's where you adjust them is with this outer ring that's the most standard part on all of them no matter who made them or when there's a ring that you tighten it down clutch gets tighter so if you're just fussing with something you're not going to tear it all apart loosen up the ring if it barely moves take it off if you can clean up the threads and then put it on if it just barely moves then that's enough well maybe you could just go forward and make it go but that's that's a matter of your decision on rust or not rust i'm going to give this one back to austin though and let him wire wheel the threads um, you want me to make it real happy yeah let's make this one happy because it is not going to be happy going together the way it is we may need to soak it cross with it when Yell at it. I'm gonna yell, yell at, at it. it. <laughs> but let's make that one happy before we put it together. We can make this one here, which is happy. We can make this one go together. So, move this up. Should be up all the way, so we got room. Should go up to where the springs are. least to the 
release springs as a minimum. Then we can put this piece in here. Like that. Make sure these are all back. And then we turn it. And ideally we want to turn it somewhere towards the middle so we got good contact with our arms. And you can see how as the arm pushes, it, it, it is pushing on this ring here, which if we had the threaded collar on here, then it would push this over and bring these two together. Yeah. And this is all on the shaft. So since this all rotates with the shaft, again, if we have the clutch disc in here that gets grabbed, then that makes the driving force. Yeah. And then that driving force transfers to this spider that the clutch disc bolts onto. This comes over everything, bolts onto, and it makes that gear go. I don't know which of these two is which. One of these is for a sputter, one is for the hoist. I don't know which one is which. This one I'm pretty sure is for the, well, that's for this clutch here, but on, no, this is the one that I, yeah. This one is probably for, for the sputter or the hoist, and the next one would be, because the one out here is the one with the brake drum that I think is gonna be for the uh, what they call a sand line it's just a utility hoist line for picking up stuff oh, okay and so you use it for picking up your casings picking up whatever um and it's just you know or, or they call them a utility line i kind of wonder as i've heard people calling them a sand line at times i have some wonder about that because am i turned around backwards with this stuff? the no, no, that's right. Yeah, the, the paper clutch yeah, is over yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. I just wanted to read, look, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, because this is where the drive goes on out past this one. That's right, yeah. Okay. Because this is where the main drive, which will be what is called, a, which is a, a combination of a pulley and a flywheel to keep it rolling. Okay. And it will be probably four or five foot in diameter. It will be a big wow. uh, pulley. That's a lot of mass. Yeah. So that's what will go out there. But anyway, this, another clutch, clutch goes there. That one's for the drum. No, there is. There's another clutch that goes on the front of this too. Yeah, it's on the yeah, picture yeah, there. Yeah, right. Right, There's, that's the clutch I was thinking of. These two here, one is sand, one is for the hoist line. A hoist line on a churn drill raises up or lowers your drilling line and the sputter what is called a sputter is a walking arm, and in the middle of the cable, it moves a pulley up and down. Mm. And so it'll have a crankshaft. There's some other versions of them, but the most basic is a crankshaft. There's an arm that's moved with a connecting rod off of the crankshaft. It goes up and down, and there's a pulley on here. So your cable goes from your winch, goes out through this pulley, and then up your mast. And you use the winch to, of course, pull up your uh, drill tooling. You okay. also use the winch brake, which is on the same drum, to let it drop down. It just drops down by gravity. There's no powering down anything. It's a cable and you got a lot of weight on your drill stem. So you set it so that your, uh, so, so that your tooling is where you want to start drilling at and then you engage your sputter and the sputter will go up and down. If you've got too much cable out, when it goes to the retracted position where your cable is mostly down, your tool will be slapping the ground and, and wobbling back and forth instead of drilling straight. Mm. But that's drilling technique, that's a different thing. Um, yeah, we, okay, so now these clutches, the two pins for this one. They need to clean up what they're in there. Uh, dang it. I think they're up here for this. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, if we were making new pins or something, we'd call them dirty, but... Oh, God, they're... I wish we could make some pins for this thing. Yep. Okay. And, yeah, we have to turn this to a point where it locks into a hole behind it. There were a bunch of holes behind it, so it should lock in somewhere. Back to that one spot that they had. No. Okay. 
Oh. What am I thinking? Hmm. I'm thinking of these. Oh, that's for the other one. No, that's that's for the spring. Okay, I just need to get a flashlight and look in there. Uh, I think the pin might be slightly crooked or something, because there were a lot of holes in there. At least I thought there were. No, I'm just thinking of these holes. Okay. So, I'll bet you if it was 1942 when we worked on these, we would have this so down that we would just do this all the time. Okay. I am oh, wrong. We go. Three holes. Three holes. We got to be up or down in that area to make it work. Okay. So again, over our arms, make sure our arms are there. So. Okay. Looking at those, but they looked at something different here. So okay, we gotta go somewhere over in here. I think where the holes. Yeah. Okay, there's one. So I got one to the other side. Yeah, that is a good alignment towards center. I like that. Okay. So now we put those lock pins in, which there's a sheet metal guard that goes over all this later, and that's what holds those pins in. Mm. So you sort of got to be sure that you're not losing them pins and messing up while you're doing this. Yeah. No pressure, it's only a hundred years old. And this is the ring for this one? No. It's the one I have. Yes, that's why we ask you, because you know. Well, it's also all labeled. <laughs> <laughs> this is not labeled anymore. Oh. I blame Bert, because he wasn't here earlier. That's, that's fair, I'm the new guy. Do the FNG, huh. the functional. But Myers, yeah, the functional. <laughs> okay, let's have a little bit of WD-40 on this so we got at least some light lube on it. W? Yeah. A little bit of that W. It normally grease, and I see something for long term. But... And there will be grease flowing all over this stuff once it's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, yeah. It was caked. It was juicy. Uh, yeah, the one thing I have to say about whoever's been maintaining these things, they've been a fantastic oiler. This thing was so covered in grease, it wasn't even funny. Uh, now this is kind of That's a problem here. Going. There's no spring. Spring's uh, not working. We gotta find him a new spring. What? You want me to bring in the spring box? Uh, if we got one with little springs, I know we do somewhere. Yeah, it's in the ammo can. Oh, and one? Yeah. That's what that is, okay. In the box it says springs. I didn't look at the label. Oh, uh, I got some. Other organizers, different things, but yeah, this needs a spring on it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And these old release springs still have enough spring in them after all this time? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just a helper. Mostly from rattling and moving, it's going to release itself. Okay. Rattling, loosing, you know. Yeah, those, those springs are not bad. I, I, all of them I looked at looked good, but this one for the lock pin, it's not going to stay in without a spring. Okay. It's just... Just doesn't work that way. So we need enough spring so that it pushes it somewhere down into here, and then not so much that you can't pull it back all the way. So it's fairly, eh, pretty small spring really, pretty short. Might have to clip a spring, it's not very long. If you can't pull it back, put a wire. And I've done this before when you're making minor changes. A lot of times you'll just pull this out, move this a little bit, and then roll it until it locks in the next hole from the spring. Mm. But if you have to move it very far at all, and that's common for an old piece of equipment because the guys before you didn't adjust it for 20 years. <laughs> so how big of a spring do we need? Uh, go okay. around that? No, yeah. Okay, well, there's the blue one in here. It might be a little bit much. Uh, yeah, I think they need. There's a little organizer box of springs we got too. Uh, that would be something you will have to find because this yeah. is the only thing about springs. That I have. There's also another spring drawer. We've kicked some out. I might have to take a run into town. I 
much, much more spring assortment than this. I used to keep lots of them in the shop. That this one's a two piece. Two piece spring. Two piece. Double the efficiency. This is uh, an example spring that's a. So, do we have another bad one? Yeah, they're probably all bad, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a sample. That is a sample. Okay, I will just run into town and I will get some more springs. Uh, I cool. think that is lunchtime. Yeah.